Fandoms are a wonderful thing. Places on the internet where you can go and talk with your other mentally diseased friends about your favorite movies, shows, and video games. They are always a great thing, and there have never been any bad fandoms ever. <laughs> Usually, people of fandoms will create stories about characters of the show or whatever it may be. One genre of said stories are called AUs, or alternate universes, where you take the existing characters of the source material and place them in different situations to get a new story. The AU in particular I want to talk about today is Glitch Tale, and why I think it's awful. Glitch Tale is an animated series about an Undertale AU in which the timeline has been glitched due to a failed genocide rap. Now, first of all, Glitch Tale's writing is not that great. It tries to pull off a lot of things that just don't work. To best explain this, I'm going to pick apart the series as a whole and then wrap it up with a nice little bow at the end. Alright, uh, episode one starts off with an AMV. And already the animation quality is subpar at best. It follows your stereotypical Sans fight, except for some reason Kara is taking over Frisk's soul. Alright, then later on, Kara takes over Frisk's body and soul, though Kara can't even be summoned until Frisk reaches level 20, which is after Sans and Asgore are killed, but whatever. Kara's wrapping things up, swings the knife, but oh, hold on, Frisk breaks out of somewhere and takes the hit for Sans. What? I'm not entirely sure what's trying to be conveyed here. I initially thought it was that Kara took over Frisk mentally, and them showing up was just a visual metaphor for taking control over Frisk's mind, but that can't be the case if one of them kills the other physically. Anyway, moving on. Sans absorbs Frisk's soul, gets a second eye, and game ends Kara, and resets the timeline. So, bit of a rocky start, but let's move on. Episode 2 starts off with Sans and Frisk going to Grillby's to quote, talk about the previous timeline, even though they don't need to teleport to talk? Oh, yeah, so they can have forced confrontation with Gaster, right. Now, in the game, we know next to nothing about Gaster. He only appears once, and very rarely at that, and even then, he just pieces out and fades away. You'd think that would make it very hard to write him into a series, right? Wrong. Since Gaster's lore is so vague in the game, Glitchdale has the freedom to do whatever it wants with this character. I can't technically fault it for this, but it still feels a little wrong that the series is just trying to insert all this backstory into a character that we really don't know anything about. You know what? Whatever. I'll let it slide for the sake of introducing a new threat. So, Era duking it out again, and Camilla plot armors the hell out of Sans and Frisk. Yeah, this is just basically episode one, but with Gaster as the antagonist. I just want to point out, as I'm watching this back, I'm noticing a lot of animation errors. Okay, so two episodes in, and the plot is already starting to slow down. Hey, uh, what if we had uh, Kara come back by killing the amalgamates, even though they're supposed to be impossible to kill? Yeah? Okay, sure. So, I'm just gonna breeze through this next part of the episode. It's essentially explained that because they reset in places they weren't supposed to so many times, Kara is glitched into existence. Immediately afterwards, Frisk bumps into Kara in the True Lab, and Kara now says that determination is what you need to exist, etc. I was here because, you know, Kara captures Frisk so they can take Frisk's determination, so Flowey runs off to get Sans, and now we have a fight of Kara versus Flowey and Sans. Any questions? In case you haven't noticed already, it's very apparent that this series caters towards the Sans crazed part of the fan base. You know the ones, the guys that just want to see Sans reincarnated as every character ever. So they're fighting again, and Kara has knife lasers and can teleport for some reason? For God's sake, I understand wanting to ramp up the difficulty of a villain to make the fight scenes more interesting, but I have a hard time believing all the moves that Kara is pulling off here. Anyway, Kara starts spouting some vague monologue about how Asriel betrayed Kara somehow. <sighs> Do you care? I really don't care. They collect Frisk's determination using the extraction machine. Kara goes to grab it, but Flowey pulls on their arm, and the next several shots proceed to switch Kara's trapped arm as many times as possible. Kara cuts the arm off, gets the determination, and the episode ends. Okay, now, this next episode really hammers in all the points I've made so far the most. Sans is fixing the machine in his workshop and... wait... Are you kidding me? You expect us to believe that this vague, broken machine is the thing that's supposed to revive Gaster- what?! There's no reason to believe this is what would happen at all. Okay, 
let's take a couple steps back. I honestly can't think of another purpose that the machine could serve, but that's the problem. Sure, Gaster and the machine are connected in ways, but there isn't enough information in Undertale to directly tie all these things together. So when a fan series like this tries to pass it off as canon, it's still a pretty big stretch. I mean, it would make more sense for Sans to just somehow have the six human souls and give them the Flowey so a Mega Flowey would fight Kara instead. Oh god damn So Frisk gets PTSD and then immediately forgives Gaster because one-dimensional protagonist. And he takes them to the souls. Okay, now that actually makes a little more sense. Which aren't heavily guarded for some reason. Not even by Asgore. And Sans gives him the flowey. Look, just go with it. At least it's something that's actually in the game. So yet another fight scene is about to happen when Kara pulls out more determination, quote, extracted in the past. But hold on, before we question Kara's time traveling abilities, why are they the colors of the other souls which represent traits that aren't determination? What is even happening anymore? To save myself a worse headache than I already have, I'm just electing to ignore the many, many Undertale lore contradictions happening right now and just skim through the fight. So Sans tells Gaster to keep some button blocked, I'm assuming the save file, but I can't be sure, and to keep Frisk safe, which, spoiler alert, he abandons them. Kara is shown to be using a bunch of powers that are color-coded, like Gaster, for some reason, even though we're led to believe that the power comes from different souls, which haven't been shown to have different powers or even magical traits in general, so I don't really know why or how any of that is happening. Yeah, colored attacks in Undertale had different meanings, but again, I don't think humans can use magical attacks within the lore of Undertale. Flowey's arm is cut off now, even though he has like 50 different ways of avoiding that happening. Gaster takes a blow, uh, Sans has a real special attack now because he needs to be edgy and Okay, you know what? That's actually not a bad shot. I'll give you this one. Okay, in the next scene, Kara introduces an entirely new soul trait, which is just ridiculous. I know I've said things similar to this before, but you can't just change a lore point, a pretty huge one at that, from the source material to make a character stronger. That's just bad writing. Lowe uses a sort of final blast attack which defuncts the souls, so I guess they're dead. Kara's about to game in Flowey, but Frisk rushes in and Okay, what? Becomes filled with determination and creates a magical shield. Then what was the point of the machine if it's not going to take everything? Okay, again, nowhere in Undertale has Frisk shown to be able to use magical powers. And then Frisk gives color back to the souls so they aren't dead? Then what happened? And okay, of course brings Azriel into play. Are you really surprised? No, honestly, are you? I'm aware I keep using the same arguments in this video, but the same problems keep coming up. Alright, how much is left? Just the finale? Sure, we can do that. Let's power through this last one. So, the finale already starts off great, because my favorite character, Papyrus, is finally introduced- Oh, oh, god, what? Is that really his design? That doesn't look like his skill at all, it looks like they melted it together and drawn it with crayon. Oh. Come on. Speaking of introducing new characters, the series just kind of forgets other characters exist aside from Sans, Kara, and Gaster, so they just kind of throw in Papyrus, Undyne, and Asgore all at once. Yeah, that seems about right. Whatever. So, in the finale, they start doing this weird thing where they have voice acting, but only for like the first couple words in the sentence or just grunts. <laughs> It's very strange, and I can't say I've seen it anywhere else. It's just a little off-putting is all. So Kara and Asriel are in a ball. Yeah, just a black ball. I, I really need to stop questioning so much or we're never getting anywhere. Kara starts explaining that they're not the one to blame for genocide, and that Frisk was the one who initially started killing people, leading to the timeline resets flushing all the hatred into themselves. Wait, did a plot device in Glitch Tale actually make some sense and work well? A round of applause to Glitchtail for finally figuring out what writing is. So Kara wants to get rid of the whole timeline, and they make this, like, a race option, like a true reset, but entirely, I, I'm a little confused, which, of course, Kara can't press themselves because, you know, that would be too easy. Okay, so 
I've been hating on this series a lot, but honestly, I think these last moments are really good. The animation's decent, Kara's redemption arc is super touching, and despite my criticism of Kara's powers being outlandish and nonsensical, I genuinely enjoyed the final fight scene. It was just super intense and fun. There were some things at the end that were kinda screwy, but I can forgive those for how much I genuinely enjoyed this part. And then it's ruined because Sans now remembers all the previous timelines because of course. Why wasn't this just an after credit scene at least? It's just so obvious that Glitchtail wants Sans to be a more prominent character when it really isn't needed. Frisk could have just simply had an internal dialogue and conflict about resetting without Sans's confrontation. Well, whatever. Glitchtail isn't terrible, but it suffers from its own main point, to use characters that weren't used a lot in Undertale. It's fine if you want to use them, but when the main point of your series is introducing new characters just so they can fight each other, you've got a problem. Honestly, half this season just feels like Camilla throwing darts at her board to see which character Sans fights next. I mean, sure, they're fun to watch, but what's the point of putting one in every single episode if they don't progress the plot? Also, the way Glitchtail tries to revive these characters is kind of awful. I don't know, it's just kind of annoying when a fan series takes this many liberties with purposefully vague easter eggs. Another thing I can't forgive is when the series just says things happen because of a glitch. You can't cover every single plot hole with a glitch. I'm aware that's the entire point of the series, to have those glitches, but that just worsens it further. So, in all, Glitch Tale is based on a pretty weak concept that is executed mostly poorly. While some parts are enjoyable, it shoots itself in the foot with the very ideas it's based on, and is just generally a frustrating experience. 4 out of 10. Hey, I hope you enjoyed. I know this is a different type of video from what I normally do, but I thought it would be fun to make something new. Now there is a second season to Glitch Tale, and I think it's just so much worse, but this video is a little too long already. So if I were to do another review video, it would be on that. If you want to see me shout my opinion at you again, like the video and comment about how much you love your wife. <laughs>